Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, Episode 50, Count the Costs, a guided Christian meditation on Luke chapter 14, verses 28 through 30. So I work as a hospice chaplain, and I've also worked as an ICU chaplain. My purpose in making this podcast is to help you to find more peace in your life and to be more open to be changed by the Spirit of God. Our meditation will follow this outline. We'll start with a relaxation exercise, then a reading from the Bible, a meditation reflection on that meaning, prayer asking God for guidance, contemplative silence, and a visualization on how we can incorporate the insights we gain. If you enjoy this meditation, I ask you to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcasts. You can also listen or find additional links at christianmeditationpodcast.com. So I invite you to get into a place where you can sit comfortably for the next 20 minutes. If you feel comfortable to do so, close your eyes now. So in this moment, take accounting of your breathing. Notice how calm or how rushed or how tense or loose your body is. Feel your body slowly adapt. As you observe, you invite your body to deep breathe. With each passing breath, you feel more calm. You allow all of the stresses of the day to fade away, and you spend this moment exclusively on the Word of God. You realize that this moment is an ideal time to feel closer to the Lord as we read from His Scriptures we will feel His peace in our lives so you continue breathing slowly and what you realize is this sends all the messages to the right parts of your body and creates more relaxation in your body. The creation of God is truly fantastic. Allowing the breaths to come easy in and out helps you find even deeper states of relaxation. You feel your muscles continually unflex little by little. With each passing breath, your body releases more and more tension until only peace and calm remain inside of your body. With each passing breath, you feel it even more, and you now do a scan of your whole body. Focus on your shoulders, your back, all the other areas where you may or may not carry attention. And during this time, these areas are calm and relaxed. Your body begins to prepare to receive the voice of the Lord through his scriptures. So I invite you now to join me in listening to this scripture. It's in Luke chapter 14 verses 28 through 30. I'll be reading first from the English Standard Version. 
This is Christ relating a parable. And he says, For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and it is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and he was not able to finish. Pause reflecting on this meaning. Now we'll read from the N-A-B-R-E version. Which of you, wishing to construct a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the costs to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation, Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, This one began to build, but did not have the resources to finish. Continue breathing deeply as we reflect now on this scripture. So here Jesus outlines an important theological thought. If you listen to the podcast for a while, you have probably heard many scriptures that outline our dependence on God and our futility in trying to do everything ourselves. So much of scripture talks about this. This scripture lays out somewhat of a a seemingly different paradigm. It shows that we need to plan. St. Augustine said, Pray like everything depends on God, and then work like everything depends on you. And this quote perhaps is an oversimplification, but it demonstrates a complex dichotomy. We should plan and work, while at the same time trusting in the providence of God. So this seems like a contradiction but it also brings humility to us and allows us to enhance our drive to follow at the same time. To accomplish great things, we have to do the best that we can in everything. This involves planning on our own and consulting God in prayer. Having faith in God does not excuse our lack of focus in working towards positive goals. We cannot do difficult things without truly pushing ourselves. Yet, as it says in Ecclesiastes, there's a season for everything, and we shouldn't run ourselves into the ground with our efforts. So I hope this comes across in the right way. Basically, the spirit of humility and gratitude is the way this is intended. As you probably know, I graduated from my master's in religious studies and I've also completed the requirements for another master's degree. This has required a lot of sacrifice and work by me and my family. Yet God has certainly been instrumental in this plan. I've seen it come together in amazing ways. Sometimes we see this conflict between our efforts and the efforts of God. Ultimately, in the wisdom of God, He knows the future and the past and how He operates, and we do not. This scripture shows us how we should plan and do the best we can, trusting in God for the rest. I find it interesting, though, that this scripture points out as the greatest downfall of building the tower is the scorn of others. 
which perhaps should not be as motivating as the salvation of God. Nevertheless, that's the context of this particular analogy. Now, Jesus follows up with a couple other analogies where he talks about an army coming to invade, and that one is much more grim. And that one's much more serious. Nevertheless, I think it's important here. God will guide us as we try our best. So we'll have time to reflect on this a little bit more in the future, but for right now, please join me in prayer. Dear Father, we pray to thee in humble prayer, asking for guidance. There's so many things that all of us, as we listen, that we have plans for, we have righteous desires. Please guide us. Send thy spirit to our hearts in the way that we need to receive answers and guidance for how to go forward. Please inspire our minds and show us how best to plan and to carry out these plans as we learn to try our best and also rely on the holy graces. All these things we pour out our hearts in gratitude. And we also ask in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I invite you to continue in prayer now. I'll give you a couple more seconds. Now that we've had an opportunity to slow down, read from the scriptures, reflect on that meaning, and ask God for guidance, I invite you to sit in silence now, resisting the urge to think too hard. I'll give you a couple more seconds. Use this experience now with God and visualize how your life can change and improve based on this scripture as vividly as possible. Do that now.
I'll give you a couple more seconds. Being able to describe our experience is profoundly important. As you've had these encounters with the Word and with God's Spirit, I invite you to try to figure out how you would explain this to someone else and to ponder how you will do that either in journal form, in an email or text, or by calling someone up. I'll give you a couple more seconds. I'm going to finish with a question as well as some wrapping up thoughts. But before I do that, I want to say a couple things. Thanks for joining me today. I release a new episode every Sunday morning at 1 a.m. Mountain Time in the United States. I would love to hear your feedback. And I realized an easier way to put out my contact information is christianmeditationpodcast.com forward slash contact. If you go to that page, you can fill out the form that will send me an email directly. Again, that's christianmeditationpodcast.com forward slash contact. I want to thank my most recent Patreon subscriber, Thomas. Thank you so much for your donations. I've had so many people recently, and I think I, think I want to give you guys a shout out when you sign up on Patreon. I have some additional plans now that I've graduated to spend a little bit more time on creating more unique content for this podcast, perhaps a video that I'll be putting on Patreon, as well as some other things that I've mentioned in the past, like a journal that can be used in in conjunction with this podcast. So again, thank you so much for supporting the podcast. It means a lot. Along with that, I've made a decision to release multiple episodes in a week. I haven't determined if it's going to be two or three, but that's probably what I'll be looking at due to the fact that I still will be working some, and it takes a lot of time to put together these podcasts. Either way, so now I want to ask the final wrap-up question, and I'd like you to actually answer this question, whether it's to me in the form of an email at christianmeditationpodcast.com forward slash contact or to a friend, or journaling it. And the question is this, what thing in your life requires additional planning? What thing in your life requires additional focused planning? Now I want to end with this final thought. I hope that this powerful message of accountability and increased desire and focus on our own parts does not diminish the ever-present and far more important aspects of the power of God. It would be disingenuous to say that our efforts are the most important things in our life. However, God shows in Scripture in several places that this is what He expects expects from us is to do our best. He wants us to try, and by so doing, we learn and we grow. Just as when we experience hardship, we grow. And when we experience successes, we also grow. When we exert ourselves fully in attaining desirable goals, then the Spirit of the Lord truly can speak peace to our hearts and show us how even through our best efforts, we are still receiving God's help. So even when we think that we're doing it all, it's as a result of God's additional help. I encourage you throughout this coming week to take specific planned action towards the thing that you've been considering today. And I know that as we do this, it provides yet another opportunity for God to bless us and for us to extend profound levels of gratitude when we recognize that in our lives. So thank you so much for joining me today. I testify that God loves you and he wants the best for you even when things aren't going well, we can always learn something from our situation. And when it is our time to return back to Him, 
we will look at this as a great opportunity to learn and to grow. And until then, may we have patience. And may we trust in God. And this I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.